Oh, look, another Mug Club movie review. And I know what you're thinking. These ass hats hate everything in the Marvel Universe. So why in the f would they do another movie review in one of our films? Let me let you in on a little secret. It's just to piss you fanboys off. All right, the Deadpool sequel. Not good. Jared and I saw it last night. Before we move on, uh, I gave this one mugs up. You? Mugs up. So two mugs up for Deadpool 2. We'll get into why. We were actually going to be releasing a Change My Mind today on Israel Has a Right to Exist, Change My Mind, but we didn't do it. My producer vetoed it. Johnny Boy, why was that? Because I didn't want you to die. Yeah, he said that he thought that there was a strong chance I could die. There so, was, uh, so inst <laughs> instead, we went we saw Deadpool 2. I liked it. You liked it. There were some things yep. not as good as the original. Full disclosure, I'm biased here. Uh, I know a lot of people weren't thrilled that I didn't like the last Avengers film. Um, these are actually some comics. I have a bunch of dead. I couldn't find them all, but I have shoeboxes full. Deadpool and Wolverine were my comics as huh. a kid. Uh, what I love is when I go through these, by the way. You see some of the old ads. Look, an ad for Meteor Man. <laughs> this is, I think this is 93. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what series that is. Um, anyway, so I always loved Deadpool. I always loved Wolverine. That being said, I acknowledge that most of the X-Men films were terrible, with the exception of uh, First Class. X-Men 2 was not bad, but mm -hmm. X-Men 3 was so laughably bad that yeah. it was very hard for me to handle. Um, and same with Wolverine. Logan was great. The other two were disappointing. So awesome. it's important to separate if you're a comic book fan versus does this stand alone as a film? I think it's actually pretty entertaining as a film, less so than the first one. There's a little more inside baseball, so if you're just going to see a film you haven't seen the first one, um, you may not enjoy this one as much. I don't think it's as good as the first one overall. If you are a fan of the comics, of course, that adds another layer, and I do think you'll probably you'll probably enjoy this one quite a bit. So what did you like about uh, the film? Not what I liked about it was, uh, it's, it's hard to set up some of my likes without setting up some of the things I didn't like, That, but I think... Overall, the character development I thought was good. They, they, every character still had an arc that kind of continued and built on from the yeah. first one. A lot of sequels. That's one thing they they really screw up is they they just that's true. Botch the character development in the in the second one. Yeah, they just assume you know where this character is going and it doesn't really go anywhere. So I think it was a good character development. Overall, it was an original story. But, well, and it's but hard. It was, it's it hard to do that too, by the way, with an antihero like Deadpool. A lot of people yeah. say, how do you continue this? Because in the comics, you know, this is a guy who uh, it, there really isn't. The same Horror kind of an demon. arc. Yeah. No, I mean, he's just, he ends up being, depending on who you ask and depending on which series was being written by whom, uh, it, it, it could be a very selfish character. It could be very grating for sure. a general film going audience. Uh, not, that wasn't the R rating, but that was why some studios had some yeah. trepidation about the film. So I do think that's good. And that's an important point. It's hard to do with a character like this. I think uh -huh. they did that pretty well. And I think the, the, uh, it is a comedy first, which I think is, if, yes. I think that's one of the things that distinguishes some of the videos, that, some of the movies that I think worked as of recent. I think, I think they approached Guardians of the Galaxy more as a comedy than just a superhero film. It yeah. didn't take itself too seriously. I think that's why I like those ones so much. I like Thor I like failed because they tried to do the same thing. It's a crappy version of it. Thor, the uh, the Ragnarok. Yeah. Well, I thought but the first two Thors were embarrassing, were and embarrassing the third one was an embarrassing try to save the pri previous embarrassing. Yeah. No, I agree with you. This is a comedy first and foremost, wrapped in a superhero yep. film. And for me, that's that's refreshing. And it's the it's the only thing that works now at this point in the in the Marvel universe because it, to me again. I, I was a comic book kid, but it takes itself so damn seriously now, as though you're going to be following this. I mean, yeah. like it's war and peace. You need to know. You need to know everything that's been going on. And if, and if you're going to take yourself seriously, you better be a Logan. Yeah, exactly. You better be, you better be or Dark really Knight. well done. Exactly. Yeah. Not 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 you know in between. <laughs> Squash just yep. like grape. You're still watching this. You must really love <laughs> content, or your dad never hugged you enough, or your Boy Scout master hugged you too much. Either way, if you're still hanging around, might as well make yourself useful and mash your f greasy basement f home on the notification bell. <laughs> so this is a, the only film that's able to make fun of how uh, self-important the Marvel Universe has become. And they do that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it works uh, in that aspect. But that, that also brings you to, I don't know if you have any more pros, that brings you to your main con. A few, a few cons. Not, nothing, nothing critical. Nothing super bad. But there is a It's entertaining. It was entertaining. For sure. You can, you can expect that. Uh... Con number one, I thought there was a little bit of a lull after the first act when you kind of realize the character, the hero is trying to find himself, and they hadn't, at the same time, they hadn't established the villain and what his yeah. 
it, it was about 15 minutes of like, I don't know what I'm supposed to care about right now because he doesn't care about anything. And I don't, I'm not really interested in the villain because I don't know what he's doing or what he's up to or why he's there. Right. It, it wasn't, and it wasn't done in a way that built mystery See, I would or disagree. I would, disagree. Here, I would say the third kind of act was there. disappointing. I would say the second act, so Cable. The third act was very predictable. No, I'd say the third act is disappointing. Because, look, spo- here's a spoiler alert, really quickly. Just fast forward the next, I would say, 30 seconds, okay? Uh, in the second act, Cable shows up with Josh Brolin, 5'7", uh, mm-hmm. 52 years old, used to the gills. Uh, he looks good for 52. He looks, he looks good. He looks good. Give 52 him a, right a lot of money. <laughs> uh, he may not be 52. He could be 48. Watch, we'll get sued. This will be demonetized because Josh Brolin made a call to uh, Susan Wojcicki. Um, so he showed up in... Again, spoiler, he's the villain in the second act, and it's an interesting villain. Anyone who knows Cable knows yeah. the tra- uh, time-traveling component. This is the main spoiler. Then it changes, and then the villain at the end, basically, put it this way, the first film, remember when he spells out his name with the dead bodies? was really funny yeah. because he's try- he's getting revenge, yep. killing this guy. There's none of that. In the third act... That was a very satisfying vil- part of the first Right. The yeah. final villain who gets killed is someone who's almost entirely... Ins- they don't really build a villain. Once Once they develop the character of Cable, who where he's not really the villain, there's no one left. Yeah, it's not very interesting. And so it gets a little disappointing at the end, but it, it's redeemed by the fact that it's still very funny very all the way through. Uh, which brings me to my second criticism, which uh, it's not an incredibly original storyline. So if you're looking for something that's totally off the wall original, I, I went back through. That's any it's, Marvel, though. No, no, uh, but particularly the, the time, time travel, saving a young person before they do something, you know, some grievous act, you know, Looper, Back to the Future, same universe, X Men Days of Future Past. Trying to stop Mystique from doing something awful. Uh, Star Trek, the reboot, Men in Black Three. It's it's a very kind of it's, it's it's become a movie trope, and it's it felt a little stale, and which which lent itself to being very predictable at the end. You kind of knew where it was going. Yeah, I guess I can kind of understand. That's the whole science fiction thing. You know, you get into yeah. Twelve Monkeys and that kind of deal. I mean, there's so many pl- things that there's so many films that do it. This film certainly didn't do it the best, but that wasn't really the focus of the film. So I. Okay, I think it comes down to this. The focus of the film, is it entertaining? Mm -hmm. Yes. One thing that they do really well is uh, they don't try to go so big like the Avengers film or the Thor films where it it just feels like you're in a video game. Galactic scale of higher city demolished. It was not as good as the first film. It was entertaining. It looked good. It was 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 funny. It was very funny. The acting was good. Um, one One thing I would say about the funny. I think they they would have benefited from a comedy writer. I went back through uh, IMDb. Not a single writing credit on there has any comedy writing experience, and it showed a little bit where some of those jokes felt like something you've seen on Twitter a hundred times. Yeah, there were a little bit the of McRib that. gag and some other things. It's like I've I've heard that. It's kind of dad jokey. Yes, it would have benefited from somebody who was a little more experienced and polished with comedy writing to come up with something that. It seemed like it relied a little bit more on the whole turning to the camera inside baseball, which was, again, comic book-wise, was unique for Deadpool when when the comic book came out. That was why there was all this buzz. Remember when Deadpool became its own series, he would always turn basically to you, the reader, instead of the camera. Uh, Kind of relied on that a little bit. Do you think it was too self-aware in this one compared to the first? Uh, that's a good question. It's a a, a a, hard line. It's a tough balance. For them as writers, that that is a hard line to to kind of Here's something I will say, and this is, again, standalone film. It works. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a strong art. Less of a strong art than the first one, though, I would say. Sir, uh, yeah. I would, c- certainly as far as... Every like, bit is gory, but not as uh, sexual. The sexual, yeah. And, and the language, not as potty-mouthy, think. anyway. Um, for, for parents who are wondering, I still wouldn't take your kids to it. But um, that's, you know... Something with Deadpool, there was so much buzz when it started out because Deadpool is this anti-hero and studios didn't want to do it. Ryan Go- uh, Gosling. <laughs> All the Ryans. Oh. That being said, Reynolds doesn't take himself nearly as seriously as no. Gosling. Guy from Cornwall, Ontario with a fake Brooklyn accent. Where'd you pick that one up? Hey, Ryan's too many damn Chris's. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, the first one was this. It was an underdog. It wasn't supposed yeah. to be created. Ryan Reynolds had something low, to prove. After low Green budget Lantern. and they and they mocked it. And they mocked honestly, it. Honestly, in they, the film. They mocked it. Right. So they mocked it. And uh, they kind of went after Marvel and Studios, in, and that was a big part of why it was funny. Well, what do you do when you're the underdog, and a big part of what makes the movie work is that you're mocking that, you're taking advantage of that, and now you're the biggest grossing R-rated film ever, I think, next to The Passion, uh, domestically. I think they even referenced right. that in the film. What do you do at that point? It's kind of like a boxer who's been known as the underdog, and, win, and then all of a sudden you're the champion. And I think there's a little bit of that in this film, mm-hmm. where they're, they're, they're kind of searching for an antagonist, and it doesn't really work. Yeah. You know, when he's like a good example is spo- not really spoiler, but when he makes a joke about how why don't we have the budget for other X Men in here? It, 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 it was funny in the first one, but now you just know it's a lie because, of course, they're going to toss all budget at this film more than any other film, probably. Sure. Yeah, they, they, they sunk, they sunk their, their pennies into it. I think one last thing I think do you think it was too PC? Because I, I would argue, I don't think it was PC, but I think the comedy and 
throughout the whole thing was very much tailored toward that Twitter social justice crowd who understand all the references because the references only that crowd would understand. It's, well, like the check cultural your pro- cultural appropriation, racist this, racist that. The, that being said, I think you could argue it's tongue in cheek. I think you could, but. It's cert- even if it w- were tongue in cheek, where sort of Deadpool's insensitive, trying to act as always politically correct. It was done in a way, and that's another thing that's there's a little bit of edge loss in this one. It was done in a way that really walked that line. It didn't really alienate anybody, right? Which it's almost, not polarizing, which almost made it less, right? I mean, if anything, if someone's going to say something that should be uh, on that line, right? We, we've talked about this with comedy, but if you're going to deal in the Marvel universe, if someone's going to be breaking. Uh, that wall. If someone's going to be going way past, it, sh- it should be Deadpool. Mm-hmm. It, it never happens. So it's funny, it's entertaining, but I would say relatively safe compared relatively to the safe, first. Compared one. to the first one. Yeah. Yep. But still, two mugs up. If go, you're looking for something drink entertaining, this. This last night's uh, certainly better than uh, Avengers: Age of what was the last one? Infinity Wars. Infinity Wars. So uh, what was it? Avengers: Invade, in, Age, Age of, of Crap. Ra- Age of Crap. And then it's just uh, the never-ending. Infinity Crap. Never-ending. I actually kind of like the pedestrian content wars. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, you first off should probably seek counseling, but. You should subscribe or hit the notification bell or watch one of these videos that's playing. The truth is, I don't know what any of that means anymore. If you try and subscribe or hit the notification bell, you won't be notified. And if you try and click one of these videos, it's just going to take you to BuzzFeed Boldly Fat Broads as they get carried out of their houses where they had to break down the North Wall and they get carried out in a land whale tarp. I don't know what's happening on YouTube. I know what's happening with Mug Club. Lottowithcredit.com slash Mug Club. You get to watch the daily show one hour every single day, not just clips, along with like 15 other shows for $69 annually if you're a student and... or or, or veteran or military, and you get to keep us here on YouTube for free because we can, we can irritate them by your support. It's worth it, right?